You know, my name is Kevin Costa, and I'm Education Director with the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company in Ellicott City, Ellicott City Maryland, uh, just outside of D.C. The words, you know, I mean, I, I think sometimes when a person first looks at, let's say, Hamlet's first soliloquy in that play, um, you go, oh, God, you know, I have to, I, I don't get poetry, I don't understand this. But then you realize that a character like Hamlet needs those words not to be long-winded, but to figure out what he thinks and feels in the moment. And one of the things I say, and I would say this to any, any learner of any age, is that we do this all the time. So, um, and the example I'll use with students is that um, we sometimes uh, will remember something that happened to us a year ago that, that made us angry, and we start to retell it. And in the retelling of it, we get angry all over again. There's something in the telling of it that brings us very much into the present of what we feel. But there's also uh, the experience of talking through something, and we see this with students just in class. You'll ask a question uh, or a topic will come up and a student will talk for a minute, a minute and 30 seconds maybe, a minute and a half, right? Um, trying to work through an idea. It's no different. And that student needs those words to put together to give, as Shakespeare says in A Midsummer Night's Dream, to give to airy nothing, a local habitation and a name. You know, so that that kind of work is, so when, it, when, it, when a Hamlet comes to the audience and says to be or not to be, or now I am alone, or, um, uh, or how will occasions do inform against me, he's, he's unpacking things that he's learning in real time with the audience. And so if they're not treated as long, poetic meditations of ideas that are already understood and arrived at, but actual unpacking and, and discovery of, of, of what a person thinks and feels, I think people relate to that. You know, they go, oh, that's right. I do that all the time. I get on the phone and I'm just upset. Why are you upset? I, I don't know. And then, well, I'll tell you why. And then all of a sudden you have a minute of, and somebody's patiently on the other line, listening to a soliloquy. And that person's working through something. I think, I think when a person approaches those speeches as something um, that uh, they need to talk about, they need to say in order to figure out what they think and feel, I think a learner, you know, somebody who's had 40 years of, oh, I don't, I don't know Shakespeare, you know, that's something that is for the scholars. I, uh, I think all, they're pleasantly surprised that, whoa, this is for me. Oh my goodness, I felt that too. I may not have been able to articulate it in such a you know, precise way. Shakespeare has that uncanny way of making us discover things in ourselves that we didn't know we felt until we heard it from him. Right. But that's always been there. It's that feeling of always having been there, except we just haven't quite articulated it as, as well. Shakespeare did not write for English majors in college. We happened to read him there. Content and information is a lot less useful than the ability to think critically and imaginatively and to problem solve imaginatively. It's the kind of real, immediate, urgent problem that has to be solved that becomes the, the terminus or the endpoint that awakens not only curiosity and enthusiasm but an urgency to, to, to problem solve, to think, to, to, to figure out how are we going to save lives, you know. What I love about the theater is that you have a script, and there's, there's something amazing on the first day of a rehearsal. Let's take Hamlet. You have Hamlet, you know, you have your cast at the table, and you know in six or eight weeks that this is going to be a fully, you hope, a fully realized <laughs> production that will move an audience, that will make them... Um, and, you know, we engage them and make them feel something and think about things and all the things that we go to. Uh, the theater to feel, but, but for the actors or for students working in that, um, uh, it, it develops deep and, and long-lasting experiences with skills that will allow them to have um, a skill set they can transfer from career to career. Um, you know, I think that the arts generally, but theater particularly, uh, is, a, is, a, is a proving ground for people who want to develop you know, very nimble and dynamic skill sets that are transferable. 
And, uh, you know, uh, if you're working on Shakespeare, you have the gravy of, you know, of, of, of working on, I think, the greatest pieces of drama ever written, you know, the greatest writing ever produced. So um, it's amazing how all of this can come together so potently in Shakespeare. You know, it's not only the works and the ideas, but it's the fact that it's in the theater, which also, you know, will train people about how to be good business people and, and how to organize and work as an ensemble and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, work for something that's larger than themselves. And so it, it, it's, as our colleague here, Chris Edwards, was talking about, was going to talk about in a panel yesterday, it's, um, you know, a wonderful mode for character education, which is something that a lot of people are talking about these days. And and, and it's not enough to say something that, you know, um, that uh, collaboration and honesty is important. It's important to say it, but it's important to have environments where students can understand through experience um, what it means to be responsible and what it means to, um, you know, if I show up and I don't know my lines and you do, and we have four weeks to go into opening night, but I say to the director, well, don't worry, I'll know my lines by opening night. I've just let you down. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that the audience will see a bad show necessarily, but I've done something really um, dishonorable to you. So there is something. But I, I know, and I think this isn't only in Shakespeare. I think it happens if you're playing basketball too, or football, or and certainly um, I think there's a great um, uh, link between the work that goes on in arts education and in athletic education. A lot of times they're pulled apart, and I, I never quite understood why, um, because I don't think there's anything more dramatic. I think Woody Allen said this one point. He said one of the things that he, why he loves to go to the Knicks is that's, you know, it's the, it's the final scene of a play every second, you know, it's, you know, back and forth and back and forth. And, and when we put theater or Shakespeare into the realm of the, of the philosophical, and you know that oh no this is for the for the experts and we don't bring it to the let it be a proving ground for for students and for for people to work on and also uh, that it's very exciting and energized and immediate uh, uh, I think we're 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 creating an artificial dichotomy.